Today we're going to go over the best and the worst books that I've read so far in 2021. This is the mid-year book freakout tag, I believe. This is honestly one of my favorite tags that I do on booktube. I look forward to doing it every year. Well, this is my second year. I've been looking forward to it since last year. I just think it's fun to kind of look back and review the books that I've read so far and just kind of share with you my thoughts and opinions on everything. So I actually just checked my Goodreads and I have read up until the point that I'm filming this video 36 books this year and I honestly haven't looked at the questions since last year so I'm just going to whatever comes to the top of my mind when I read the question is going to be my genuine answer and let's just get started with the first question for the book tag. So the first question kind of just starts off with a bang which was what is your favorite book or favorite books that you've read so far in 2021? So honestly I knew that this was going to be one of the questions so I was kind of like thinking about this like days before I was filming this video and the one book that came to mind which is not surprising to me because I actually really love this book was Good Morning Monster, A Therapist Shares Five Heroic Stories of Emotional Recovery by Katherine Gildner. I love this book so much. It was basically a therapist writes um, about her patients. So she has five different patients and they each have their own section in the book. And you get to learn a lot about their therapy process and the things that they've been through in their lives. And I love this book so much. These were some of the wildest stories I've ever heard of my life and they're all true. So this is probably one of my favorite books, if not my favorite book that I've read so far this year in 2021. In addition to Good Morning Monster, just to throw out some other books that I really loved, I really liked The Shining by Stephen King. That was the first time I ever read The Shining. I still haven't seen the movie actually, but now I understand why this book is known to be one of his like best works. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so good. Of course, This Love Story Will Self-Destruct by Leslie Coleman is one of my favorite books of all time. I try to reread it every year, so I think this was my third reread of it. So this book I actually listened to on audio, and it is The Defining Decade, Why Your 20s Matter and How to Make the Most of Them Now by Meg Jay. So I love this book so much that I would literally just lay in bed and listen to it, which is not something I ever do with audiobooks. Usually when I'm listening to an audiobook, I'm walking or I'm getting ready or I'm doing a chore or doing something. And I love this book so much that I didn't want any distractions. I was just sitting in bed and just listening to it. This book is all about how to make the most of your 20s to set you up for success later on in your life. And I thought it was just so applicable to where I am currently in my life. And I loved it so much. This is going to be a short answer to this one. So the next question is, the best sequels you've read so far in 2021 um I don't really read series so I just went through like my entire Goodreads and I haven't read one series this year so I literally don't have a book for this question so I guess it would be none so the next question is a new release you haven't read yet but want to so I don't usually read new releases but the first book that comes to mind is actually the next book that I was planning to read, which just happens to be a new release, and that is The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This came out at the beginning of the year, and my friend got it for me for my birthday, and it's set in Seattle, which is where I'm from, and I'm going home soon, so I was like, why not read it for the trip? I guess this would be the book that I am looking forward to reading. I'm a little nervous for it because I'm not usually a contemporary romance person or just contemporary in general but I am excited to give it a shot so I guess that would be the new release that has come out yet but I haven't yet read so again I don't really feel like some of these questions actually apply to me because this is just like not the way that I read but the next question is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year again I'm not really like you know like a new release person or like looking forward to new releases a lot of my favorite authors that i was waiting on their books to come out i'd actually already read this year so i'm not looking forward to reading them anymore there's one book that i'm looking forward to reading let me find it so i can actually remember the name it is the nobleman's guide to scandal and shipwrecks by mackenzie lee this is actually a sequel it's the third book in a 
kind of like companion series so I've been looking forward to reading this book it's just like a YA I don't know like a YA series that like I've enjoyed it's really fun and lighthearted so this book kept getting pushed back I think because of COVID so I think it's now coming out in November so I am looking forward to reading that book and other than that I'm honestly not looking forward to reading any new releases a lot of the books that I'm really wanting to read have already come out so yeah I guess it would just be this one actually let me take that back to a new release that I'm excited to read I do have another one I just thought of it it is How to Not Die Alone, The Surprising Science That Will Help You Find Love by Logan Uri. I'm actually really looking forward to reading this book. It came out February 2021. I just realized that this did come out recently. So this does count as a new release. I have it on hold the library. I'm hoping to get it when I get back from my trip. But I love dating and relationship books and although I am in a relationship I just think it's so interesting to learn more and I believe that she is a psychologist who studies and write about writes about this topic so this is a book that I'm really looking forward to reading so get ready for that. The next question is my biggest disappointment of the year which actually would probably be the book that I just read which is My Ride or Die by Leslie Cullen. This is as I just mentioned one of my favorite authors um, came out with her debut novel in 2018 and I've been waiting ever since then for her to come out with her next book so she came out with this it's a contemporary kind of romance book mostly based on friendship I'd say and I honestly wasn't expecting to love it as much as her first book but I I it really didn't hit <laughs> the nail on the head for me like I felt like it was not quite what I was looking for. It was like a fun and lighthearted book and I read it really quickly. I just feel like the quality of the book could have been a little bit better. So this was definitely a disappointment for me. I'm not saying it was an awful book. I just feel like her potential in writing is higher than this. So I was a little let down by it, but it was like an average book for me. It's not one that I'll ever really think about all that often but I still really love her as an author and I will read everything that she comes out with in the future. So now I'm gonna go through all of the books that surprised me this year. So the first I'm gonna mention as I've said before is The Shining by Stephen King. The only reason why this book surprised me is because I had started it earlier and I ended up DNFing it and I usually don't pick up books again that I DNF. So I just decided that I really wanted to read this book and I ended up loving it, which is kind of a surprise for me. So that was definitely a surprise. I'd also say that Love Story by Eric Siegel was a surprise just because it is a fiction love story as in the title and that's usually more of a miss for me than a hit but I ended up loving this book so much it's a love story that's set on a college campus in the 60s and I really loved the main characters I loved how short and sweet it was the audiobook was really poor quality but it was read by the author and I thought he did such a good job with the reading of his own book so this was definitely a big surprise I'm really surprised that they ended up giving it a five out of five stars so Grown by Tiffany Jackson is another book that surprised me. I don't like YA books usually and I actually really loved like the first like three-fourths of the book. It was just like the last part of the book that really lost me but I did really like this book. I don't think about it a lot but at the time when I was reading it I was like super engrossed in the book. Woman Code <laughs> by Alyssa Vidi was like also surprising because it's all about women's health and I was just like ripping through this book and this is not usually a type of book that or a topic that I'm interested in but I ended up being way more interested in in it than I thought I would be so I was very surprised with that as well. Okay this next question is really easy it's my favorite new author so I would say that would be Irvin Yalom. I read two of his books this year for the first time. I read let me <laughs> remind myself what they're actually called. The Gift of Therapy, an open letter to a new generation of therapists and their patients. So this is just about like advice that he gives to people that want to be therapists. He is a psychotherapist himself. And then I just recently read another one of his books, which is Love's Executioner, Other Tales of Psychotherapy. It's kind of similar to Good Morning Monster, where it's just a series of different patients and their stories. He is like the Stephen King of like therapy books. So I've only read, those are the first two that I've ever read. I recently discovered him this year and I'm planning on reading a lot more by him so I'm really happy that I found him as an author 
because I really love his writing and his work and just like the way he thinks so I'm just excited to kind of continue on with my journey with his books. I'm just gonna skip the next question. I think I did this last year too. I'm not even gonna answer it. It is my newest fictional crush. Not how I read books. I don't like also I've just been reading a lot of nonfiction this year so I'm not like really reading a lot of books where I have like a fictional crush. Um, as I said last year, I have like one fictional crush that I've had for a very long time and I don't cheat on my crushes and I haven't read that book this year so I can't actually put it down but yeah I don't usually like especially with fiction I'm like wanting I don't know that's just like not how I read so I'm just gonna skip that question. I just have to say something so the next question is my newest favorite character. Is it just me or, or are these questions a little bit biased for fiction? I feel like I don't know I'm like a huge nonfiction reader so I don't necessarily think of like nonfiction people as like characters because they actually exist but I'm gonna answer it for nonfiction anyway so the first one that comes to mind in Good Morning Monster was Danny who is an, a Native American man and I just really like connected with him he is like such a soulful and kind person and he was one of the patients of of Catherine Gildner's and I just I don't know I just like really connected with the story and I really loved him so I guess like he would be one of my newest favorite characters or people that I read about this year. Books that made me cry. Not usually a crier when it comes to books. I'll just say this there's no book that made me like sob cry. Again that's just not how I read. When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. Um, I wouldn't say I was like, again, I wasn't like sobbing, but I think that like once I finished the book and then I started like looking up pictures of him, by the way, this book is about a, a doctor who was basically like, this is his like letter on his deathbed. Um, really sad. Like he got diagnosed with like lung cancer when he was in his thirties. And I think like once I kind of had a face to a name, I really got like more emotional about it. Cause I was like, wow, this is like a real human being who had so much potential in his life and has this brand new family and he was just being so raw and real during this book it was just really sad to know that he was going through such a traumatic time so I think I definitely got teary-eyed with this book as well but aside from that I think that no other book really took an emotional toll on me which is fine because I don't really read books to feel that way I like to like more read books to learn but I guess the, I would say those are the books that were the most emotional for me okay books that made me happy this is an easy one actually so I'm gonna say it's the little book of H Hugo <laughs> uh, the Danish way to live well by Mike Wicking if I'm pronouncing that correctly this is basically all about Hugo or however you pronounce it which is like the Danish way of just being cozy and adding like sweet moments to your life this book is a total feel good I would just listen to it while I was getting ready in the morning it talks about like books and sweaters and cozy treats and creating community and I learned so much about Danish culture it was so happy and so fun and so I really did enjoy this book it was a very cute and short and sweet audiobook the author is actually like this the CEO of like the happiness research institute or something in Denmark so it's like based off of like science and it was really interesting and really cute and, and fun and cozy so the next question is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received if you watch my channel you know I don't buy books usually but I did buy I, I bought one book that I, I actually like just thought of it just now and then I did receive another book that I really like so see the most beautiful book I did buy myself was which I'm just like too lazy to go get them but it's this copy of Little Woman um which is so beautiful I would need to get around to actually reading this book but it's stunning it's I love also how like little like how short and thick it is so cute and then I know you guys won't think this is beautiful but I think it is and my friend bought this for me for my birthday it's a book that I actually read last year which is maybe you should talk to someone by Lori Gottlieb I originally got this book from the library and then she bought me my own copy of it because she knew how much I loved it and it was just so much fun to have like my own version of the book without the library cover on it like the plasticky cover so I was very excited to 
get that book as well so i'd say those are probably the prettiest books that i've gotten so far this year what books do you need to read by the end of the year um a lot of the books that i just listed i mean i guess i can give you guys like a mini tbr as i said i was planning on reading the x talk next i little women as well i do want to read that at some point in my life i also want to read doctors by eric siegel who also wrote love story i also bought this book actually because i don't think my library had a copy of it you know how to not die alone was a book that i wanted to read burnout by emily like nagasaki i'm totally forgetting the author's name those are just some of the books that are on my mind i mean we'll see again what i actually end up reading i'm trying to get back into fiction so i love my non-fiction books my psychology therapy books whatever but i'm really trying to get back into like fun reads so i'm hoping to kind of like switch it up and maybe pick something up that's like different than what i normally would but yeah i don't like have any like crazy plans i kind of just read whatever i'm in the mood for which can change on a day-to-day -day basis so i guess that would be my reading plans for the rest of the year so i don't know how much this question actually applies to me it's the favorite book to movie adaptation you've seen this year as i've said i have not yet read the shining which is a book that i have been wanting to watch the movie of even though i know like the story in the movie is a lot different you actually guys don't know this yet but um, i dnf'd um what's it called billion dollar loser i can't remember the author's name but i'll put a picture of it right here and i yeah i dnf'd it at like 50 percent just because it wasn't like that invest like my audiobook ran out of time and I wasn't like that invested in the book to like renew it and then like listen to it again but I did watch the documentary which I thought was like okay like I think what happened with wheat work was like interesting but I don't know like how interested in the story I actually am that's honestly the only movie documentary thing that I've watched from a book this year and it's a book that I didn't even end up finishing so yeah not really a movie person that's like a fun fact about me i don't really love movies i like never really watch them so that's why yeah most of these questions i feel like don't apply to me and that's okay oh my god is that the end of the tag wow that just ended so abruptly <laughs> okay so i was actually thinking because i went through a lot of the books that i read this year i was thinking about just listing all of the books i've read up until this point that i haven't yet mentioned and just giving like a very brief synopsis of them so these are all the books that i haven't yet spoken about so the first book that i finished this year was deep work rules for focus success in a distracted world by cal newport um the second book that i read by him i thought this book was okay i listened to it on audio um i did learn something from it so that was good the next book that i read was northanger abbey by jane austen this was a total slog for me to get through and like really turned me off from reading classics this year which was one of my goals so yeah i don't know if i'll be reading another jane austen book again in my lifetime more than words by jill since apollo this is my second reread of this book i also read finding flow the psychology of engagement with everyday life by mihale chitset mihale i actually remembered how to pronounce that name it was okay norwegian wood by haruki Murakami. this is actually a book that i would have mentioned in one of my greatest disappointments of the year um not i just like i was like loving this book so much and then it just totally lost me towards the end um beautiful beautiful writing though i will say that homebody by ruby carr poetry collection i don't really think about it a lot the boy the mole the fox and the horse by charlie mckeezy super cute read it to your kid if you have one um it's a kid's book so you know i don't think about it a lot but it's it was very cute Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, a solid four out of five read. Liked it. Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus by John Gray. Not my favorite relationship book I've ever read. Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. I thought this book was like kind of boring and average, but you know, whatever. Uncomfortable Conversations with the Black Man by Emmanuel Acho. This is a good audiobook that I do recommend reading if you want to learn more about um, that topic. Everything After by Jill Santapalo. This was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I I liked it. I thought it was like a solid book for contemporary romance. Hold Me Tight, Seven Conversations for a Lifetime. I 
Lifetime of Love by Sue Johnson. Again, not one of my favorite relationship books that I've read this year. It was kind of a slog for me to get through towards the end. The Sight of You by Holly Miller. Just a cute contemporary romance. Very like cottagey, cute English feels. Gratitude by Oliver Sacks. This is just like a kind of like an essay collection of this guy in his like later years of his life. I thought it was okay. I listened to it on audio. Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup by John Carreyrou. Um... It was fine. I listened to this audiobook while I was reading it, which helped me get through it a lot more. I wish it was like more editorial than I would have liked, but it was good. The Art of Loving by Eric Fromm, which was good, philosophical and psychological. Later by Stephen King, kind of a three star average read that I don't remember or think about. Oh, I did like this book. This is Your Brain on Birth Control, The Surprising Science of Woman Hormones and the Law of Unintended Consequences by Sarah Hill. Amazing book if you're interested in learning more about that topic. Stop Missing Your Life, How to Be Deeply Present in an Unpresent World by Corey Mascara, another really amazing book if you want to learn how to meditate or just be more mindful. Think Again, The Power of Knowing What You Don't Know by Adam Grant. Decent solid read. I read that on audio. How to Meditate, A Practical Guide to Making Friends with Your Mind by Pema Chodron. Good book on how to meditate. I actually would recommend Stop Missing Your Life over this book because I thought that was a little bit more um, chill and <laughs> contemporary than How to Meditate. And then lastly, the a book that I have not yet mentioned in this video is Why We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams by Matthew Walker. A slog to get through. I did fall asleep during this book a lot but he said that was okay. So those were all of the books that I've read so far this year which is crazy. Kind of just like a little rundown. Wow that was like a lot of information. <laughs> let me know. Okay let me let me know this. What was your favorite book that you've read so far this year and your most disappointing or least favorite book that you've read? Which I guess can be two different questions but let me know. I'm really excited for the rest of my reading year, to be honest. I'm hoping to like continue up this momentum of fiction, and I'm excited to share it all with you. But thank you so much for getting all the way until the end of this video. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one.